Hello, this is Sonia with S. Curtis Properties in Los Angeles, California and the surrounding areas. Um, many people will say, you know, oh, well, you have to use a local expert uh, to be your realtor. In other words, it should be someone that is, you know, segregated to one little neighborhood. Now, I totally understand why people say that, because you do want someone who knows the streets and the locations and all that. But I have been able to help people sell their homes in areas where I don't live, where I've never lived. And I was able to get them a top dollar quickly with excellent terms. OK, so it, it's not necessarily true that they have to live there to be an expert. OK, because if you're an expert in real estate, there are certain things that translate in real estate, no matter what the neighborhood is like. Obviously, whatever neighborhood the home is in is going to dictate uh, the comparable prices, you know, certain prices in certain areas. Obviously, if you're living, if you have a house in Beverly Hills, it's going to command more money than a house in Pacoima or Watts. It just is because, you know, certain parts of town are, are considered more valuable than others and the property values are higher. Um, so that goes without saying, but anybody who just does a little research can figure out what the current comps are. So that is not necessarily a reason to go with a local realtor, okay? Now, I'm from Los Angeles. I've lived in many neighborhoods in Los Angeles. I've lived all over the place. So, and now I'm up in Kern County, an hour north of LA, and I still represent people going all the way west to the mountain, San Bernardino Mountains, all the way to, you know, West Covina and um, Alhambra and like uh, Pasadena. And then I go south to Torrance and South Bay and I've gone north up to Bakersfield. So, and I've gone um, west to Thousand Oaks. So it's like, I'm willing to drive <laughs> for my commission and my pay as long as it's a good working relationship and it makes sense, okay? So here's the thing. Uh, an expert in real estate is going to know how to price your home properly. They have the tools to figure it out. They're going to talk to the seller. They're going to say, what do you love about your house? What do you love about your neighborhood? They're going to drive around the neighborhood. They're going to see, are you right across the street from a school? Now, for some buyers, that may be a selling point. If they have small kids, they can walk right across the street. They'd love it. Other people, not so much. Other people may be working from home and they want quiet in the day and they don't want kids noises and playing outside their their uh, windows all day so you know that's just a personal preference if you live right next door to a dump you know this is why it's important to have your uh, real estate experts show up and really walk around the neighborhood drive around the neighborhood um, I usually like to go in the day and the night I ask questions I look with my own eyes I see what the shape is of the properties around you can have a house in a residential area that looks gorgeous online when you show up you go oh there's a dump right next door or there's a strip mall right next door or there's a an apartment building right behind and so the the neighbors in the backyard are like looking down at you and you don't have privacy in your backyard those things may determine a lot of buyers from wanting to buy there for good reason, right? It may not, but it may. So you, as a real estate expert, it doesn't matter that I lived on that street or that block or in that zip code even. As long as I do my research and I show up and I know what to look for and I know how to market a property, I can still help you. Okay, so I had some friends, dear friends, they were selling their house in Granada Hills, I've never lived in Granada Hills, and um, but they trusted me to sell their house, which was such an honor. I'm so grateful. So for six months in advance, they said, what do we have to do? And I said, here's, here's a list of questions you're going to have to ask on the transfer disclosure statement and the seller property questionnaire. These are our standard forms in California Association of Realtors, where we have to use in every transaction, every seller needs to fill them out, except for if they've never lived in the house. If you've never lived in the house, there is an exemption form, blah, blah, blah. But you still, the bottom line in real estate, when you sell, disclose, disclose, disclose. That is the number one rule when you're selling a property. Now, a lot of sellers get scared. They're like, oh, I don't want to disclose that there was a leak. We fixed it. I don't want to say there was. And I'm like, you still have to say there was a leak, okay? Just because you fixed it doesn't mean that there wasn't a leak. And here's why you have to tell people. Because let's say you fixed it. You thought everything was fine. You didn't tell the new buyer that there was a leak before. The new buyer closes escrow, moves in, 
they are living there and all of a sudden the leak starts again. Maybe it wasn't fixed properly. Maybe you thought it was, maybe it was a, a leak under the house and there was still water dripping. You didn't know, you weren't lying. But the thing is that that leak that started up again, that wasn't fixed properly, now could have a mold problem. They could bring a health problem. Now you can have a lawsuit because you didn't disclose that at one point there was a leak, even though you fixed it. In my experience, I, I have never seen a buyer, in my experience, I've never seen a buyer get deterred from buying a property because a seller was honest in disclosing whatever problems there were with the house, okay? I have seen people walk away from deals and get sued for not disclosing things that they found out after the fact. So if, if you're selling a property, even if you fix things, great, just let people know there was a leak into the house, we had it fixed with a plumber. The kitchen sink was dripping. We had it fixed. Uh, the bathtub was not draining properly. We had it fixed. There was a leak in the roof. We had it fixed, you know? And if you still don't have things fixed, I would recommend you do get them fixed before your open house, before we take photos. The other big thing I tell people is you want a blank slate. You want a blank canvas to sell your home so that buyers can picture themselves in your home, their belongings. Their, they have to make it their own, right? So if you are fully like if you have so much furniture and I call them tchotchkes, <laughs> like on all your bookshelves and on all your cupboards and on all the counters, if it's just wall to wall with your stuff, that's going to be a hard sell and it's going to get you less money. Okay. So my friends listened to me and it was so wonderful. They did everything I said. I wish every client would listen. It was so great. And do you know, they cleared out so much stuff. They were leaving the state. So I said, look, just start packing things up. Anything you're going to take with you that you don't need every day, box it up and put it in your garage. Any big bulky pieces of furniture that you don't need, that you're not going to take with you out of state, call, you know, Goodwill, go donate it, call, put it on Craigslist or Facebook marketplace, sell it, get it, get it out of your house, purge, 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 clutter, personal items, things you're going to take with you, box up, label, put them in the garage, you know? So they did that. And they, cause they'd lived there over 20 years. They have two kids, their parents visit, they had pets at some point, you know, there's a lived in home. No, no, nothing wrong with that. But when you go to sell, you need it to be a blank canvas as much as possible. So they did that. They also retouched a bunch of the paint that needed touching up. They um, just cleaned everything up, made it really nice. I told them how to redo the curtains that were a little bit like, you know, mixed and match colors all over. I said, make solid colors, make it easy, make it monochrome. They did everything that I asked. So guess what happened? We had our first open house. We had so many people coming through. The pictures looked fabulous. The house looked fabulous. And we got so many offers. I think we had over 15 offers or we, I had a lot of people calling and asking and I already had highest offers. So I said, look, I, I don't, if you can't come in high enough, I don't even think it's worth your time. I'm honest like that. You know, realtors will ask me, they'll say, you know, do we stand a chance if we send in, you know, 700,000? I'm like, nope, we already have offers at 900. You know, so <laughs> I won't tell them the exact number, but I'll just tell them like your buyers are going to have to really come up stronger to be considered because uh, we have a lot of competition and there's some very strong offers. So anyways, that's to motivate the buyers to really come in strong. And it's also it's true, you know, so anyways. We got amazing offers. We sold it within two days of being on the market. I mean, we, we started, you know, negotiating counter offers with the, uh, a few buyers and we locked in a buyer within five days after negotiations. They got no credits, no repairs because my, my clients did everything. They did a bunch of work on the house, disclosed everything. As a matter of fact, the other agent was like, wow, that was the most detailed like seller property questionnaire and transfer disclosure statement I've ever seen. I was like, yeah, that's, they were my friends. They listened. I told them, be honest, tell them everything. So anyways, that's, that's how I like to roll representing my sellers. Um, it, and it ultimately, they got 120,000 over asking in five days, no credits or repairs. They got to stay in their home for another 30 days rent free.
And it went really, really well. And the buyers were happy, you know, because they knew what they were getting. There were things they knew they were going to have to do to make it to their liking. And there were things that, that were already repaired that they knew they didn't have to worry about. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to make comments down below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll still come back and do some teaching on the, what I see going on in the real estate market. And if you have questions, I'd be happy to do a teaching just on what you asked and give you an answer. Okay, thanks so much. Bye.